Hello YouTube and their crypto enthusiasts and welcome to another episode of Equibit Trading. The bull market in Bitcoin is back and today we are going to study it and see where is a good place to enter. Of course we bought something uh, here around the bottom, uh, not after this yellow line, I haven't bought much, but uh, uh, managed to pick up a few here. So now we are looking at what happened with this dump and also we are looking at when it's a good time to enter. So what you normally want to do in a bull market when we are sure like we are now that the bull market have returned, that is to buy when we are hitting the 20 moving average because that is what you do in bull markets you wait for the price to drop to the 20 moving average and then you buy uh, most of the time it will not go all the way down so it's it's about how much should you risk it and the question is also is now a good time to buy if we look at the weekly now we see the price is almost at the seven moving average on the weekly and it's far from the 20 moving average this is telling me that now it's risky to to buy most likely we will go above the seven moving seven moving average on the weekly and close above it and then have an upside but i want to wait until we go above the seven moving average and close above it and we might do that today but there is a long time left on the week so let's look at the daily scale so when we look at the daily we see the story is much the same so i might not want to risk not putting um, my money in uh, this week so what I might do is for the um, um, for wait for for the um, uh, candle here uh, to to uh, close above the seven move, 20 moving average. Uh, so I will be probably buying Bitcoin tomorrow because what is going to happen now is if we close above this. Um, uh 20 moving average here um we can count back and see what is going to happen with the seven moving average so that would be the seven last candles that's one two three four five six seven so that means that tomorrow we're going to get rid of this big ugly one and the day after we're going to get rid of these and replace them with the candles over here which is going to make the uh, seven moving average turn and go upwards and hopefully cross the 20 moving average giving us a golden cross so that is it for the daily um, we are above this line here so we can see that we are even closing probably above the wigs of the um, uh, seven um, uh, previously high sorry um, and all of them so if we close above this i am fairly bullish um, i go full bull mode if we close above the 20 moving average because what might happen is that we come up here and we get a second opportunity to buy um, down here at this range, probably getting close to, to the seven moving average. And for the people watching right now, we can also have a look at the hourly uh, before we go into uh, blockchain um, analysis to see what the blockchain is telling us so right now this hour um, 
if we close above this line, I am fully bullish. Um, we don't even, this is not completely straight. Let's make a straight line like this. So we can even bring that down here. I think that is fine, maybe even as low as this. So if we get about a uh, close here now and uh, a confirmation maybe that we get a little bit of a pullback towards this line, maybe, maybe set it up here, um, then I think it's going to be a great day for Bitcoin. And that, of course, is going to, um, if we go back to the daily, that is going probably to push us above the 20 moving average. Um, but I do not want to take much risk, so I want to, to wait until that happens. If it goes down, I get the possibility to buy Bitcoin cheaper. Um, and if it cross and close above the 20, then okay, I am uh, uh, not taking that much risk and I'm fairly confident that I am going to be have a, see a huge upside here. So let's have a look at the blockchain. Uh, what is this telling us? We can first begin with this one. And we can see, here we can see how Bitcoin are distributed, the amount of Bitcoin between different players. So you have the miners here in gray. And as you can see, miners are getting smaller and smaller part of the pie and um, because other people are buying um, from the miners and you can see here exchanges they had a lot of coin available in 2020 but now we have sort of a supply shock it's not critical yet but i think it can be very soon and we also see that the whales are getting a bigger portion of the pie. So whales are buying. It's a little bit hard to see on this, this chart here. But as you can see here, the shrimps, that's the people owning, uh, I think it's less than one Bitcoin. Um, those, those are increasing and those have been increasing steadily since 2016. It's a, li it's a little bit easier to see on this chart here. We don't have the miners and the, uh, the, um, um, and the, yeah, here, here you see the definition. Um, a shrimp is, is less than one Bitcoin. Octopus, 10 to 50 and so on and so on. So we can see that the shrimps, they've been increasing steadily their holdings, their amounts. So they're up to 2 million now. And this is just increasing. The people who are selling off is what people, you know, like to refer to, to the guys who came in a little bit lucky, bought a lot when it's what's cheap. So they've been, been uh, uh, kind of selling off a little bit lately, but the big whales and uh, the humpbacks they've been buying like crazy so you can see they increase their um, portion of the pie with 1 million bitcoin so this is very interesting to see that that the the shrimps like the normal average guy in the in the straits he is well there is becoming more and more and more of them um, so we have more and more and more people holding Bitcoin and it seems to be at a steady growth, which is very interesting because as long as this is growing, as long as the number of people holding one Bitcoin is increasing, um, the price is going to go up. And especially when these guys are really accumulating, that is when we are going to see huge price increase but as you can see the 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 shrimps have contributed uh, just as much um they have also increased their holdings with one million bitcoin and this can very soon take a hockey stick form and go crazy up like this 
So that is bullish, bullish news. Or not news, but bullish facts. And you can also see the number of coins on exchanges are shrinking, which means that people are taking, buying uh, crypto on exchanges or Bitcoin on the exchanges and pulling them off exchanges. So now let's talk a little bit about this candle. What happened here? Because um, this caught very many people by surprise. Because if we look at this chart, I got this from Willy Wu. Um, go to his website, uh, wubble.com. Uh, he got a lot of great stuff. Um, but here we are looking at Bitcoin um, futures. And this line really represents, to put it in an easy way, um, the amount of leverage um, on, on the futures. So what we can see here when everyone is FOMOing in, people are taking up a lot of leverage and they are then um, going crazy in on, on the 5x, 10x on futures and then the whales liquidate them um, but what was very strange we, we saw this here as well huge liquidations um, here huge liquidations um, and and um, what happened here uh, kind of got people a little bit by surprise because we are not at a very high leverage ratio here but if we look at the spot uh, market, uh, how many dollars were lent out um, in, in the spot market, um, then, then we see that we were going towards a peak and here, and then we have the dump. So that was, was why people uh, were caught by surprise because there was no sign of this in the future market but if you look at the spot market you can see that there was a lot of people borrowing money uh, on margin to trade on the spot market and finally we are looking at the thing that makes me say that the bull market is not over and that we probably are uh, out of, of uh, the, the four-year cycle uh, and we need to adjust our strategy according to that. So what they say is long-term holder supply hits all-time high. Um, today, long-term Bitcoin holders control 12 million of the Bitcoin um, and have accumulated half a million uh, over the last 30 days. So if we look at this graph from um, uh, Willy Woo, um, we can see Bitcoin long-term holder supply shock, it's called. And this line here really represents the accumulation rate of the long-term holders. So we can see in the previously um, bull markets, um, we had had some peak after the bull market. Um, then then the, the long-term holders started to accumulate and we had one peak here one peak here and then a minor peak here um, for the accumulation of bitcoin and then when the price started to uh, go up uh, long-term holders uh, sold some bitcoin but look at what they did after um, the price started to to uh, fall they started accumulating and those creating the floor in the price right here this coincide with this and you see um, the price goes up and then falls and the long-term holders are starting to accumulate here on this peak and you see it it kind of uh, bottoms out uh, this is uh, a little dip here, um, and again, the uh, uh, long-term holders are accumulating. 
Um, this is the uh, Cerveza dip. So so this is a little bit like, uh, um, but but after that um, dip there, the, the long-term holders are accumulating. The price goes up. The long-term holders take some profits. And look at what they're doing now. They're accumulating in um, middle of a bull run. And we never had three high peaks like this before. In the previous bull run, um, we had, uh, or after after the, the bull run, we had one, two, three peaks here. And the price steadily went up. But, but now we have, within this period here, we have three real peaks. So we're really out of, of the cycle. Um, because I think one explanation for this can be that the miners, as, as we saw here, they are, um, that was not here, that was here, the miners... Uh, are getting less and less Bitcoin. So they have the halving that happen every four years have less and less impact. Um, because when you go from peanuts to peanuts, that's not the same as, I think we had one with uh, inflation rate of uh, uh, Bitcoin. That was, let me see if I can find that. Yes, here we go, the inflation rate of Bitcoin. So you see here in 2016, we had the um, uh, inflation cut from about 9%. This is inflation of Bitcoin, new Bitcoins entering the market through the miners. It went from 8% eight down to 4% due to the halving. And then we went from, from 3 3.7 down to 8 1.8 but it makes sense that bitcoin will no longer follow these um, enormous price gains in um, uh, after the halving and that we will not see a huge dump um, in in after after it gone up because the halving will be less and less um, have less and less impact because when you go from from uh, two percent inflation to to uh, or for four four percent inflation to to uh, one point eight, that is much of a larger impact on the supply side than going from from uh, one point eight down to to maybe one percent inflation. So you're basically going from uh, almost no inflation to to uh, a little bit less inflation so i think that's what we had in our price model that we had uh, earlier as well where we said okay the first the first bubble was uh, nine thousand percent the next bubble was uh, or we we took from this bubble the first bubble was nine thousand percent and then we had a thousand percent um so no the first bubble was nine thousand percent increase then we had three thousand percent increase and then we had um had uh or hoping to have a thousand percent increase um but we might have more if we never fall if we just keep going and uh and do not have this 80% uh, correction that we had uh, here. Well, I do hope this was helpful and remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification because we will be following this continuation of the bull market uh, very closely now the next few days and weeks. So until next time, bye bye.